Let's see if I can remember how to play this. <laughs> okay, I give up. How bad? It was my bad. It was my bad suggestion. Anyway. Oh my god! It was a- it was a horrible Steve, suggestion. Steve wanted to like walk around with his white flag on stage and everything. Yeah, to that yeah song. I know. Like a good old Sunday. day. Yeah, Sunday, Bloody Sunday by YouTube. Classic. So classic. Didn't like the Edge say we're going to take over the world with like four chords or something. Uh, uh, maybe even maybe. one note. Maybe. Yeah. So you know what? I was of all the guitarists out there that I can, you know, basically emulate and appreciate yeah. that thing. The one guitarist who led me to absolute disaster this morning was The Edge, who actually, believe it or not, inspired me to learn how to play guitar. He was my first guitar hero. Really? Yeah. Wow. And wow. Um, do you remember the album Unforgettable Fire? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, the, what was that? Yeah, it was, it was the Unforgettable Fire, that song that a lot of people don't seem to remember yeah. these days. That's right. That's a great beautiful, beautiful song. I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that album was incredible. It's just people, all they think about is Joshua Tree. Right. Yeah. You know? yeah. Pride. Pride. That, that song Pride and MLK. I mean, there, there's mm-hmm. so many great tunes on that album. So if you haven't... Yeah. If you haven't heard that album, I mean, go check it out. It's just go listen to Unforgettable Fire. Awesome album. Yeah, absolutely. David, you missed What's up? the edge. The edge kicked us off this morning. You know, we had our white flag and he started off playing Sunday, Bloody Sunday in honor of you two at the Sphere in Las Vegas. <laughs> I, I've just put the uh, the album here and I will listen to it later today um and you know as you guys know i um i just discovered uh laugh what you want but until last week i have never heard of fleetwood mac oh now i know but wow (laughs) yeah it's okay and i and i don't mind confessing these things because i am open to new things oh that's great you know i ask random people like hey like what should i be listening to and this guy oh dude fleetwood mac i'm like okay Wow. Hey Dave, what should we listen to? Too? Maybe we should listen to this. <laughs> oh my god. You know, you know, it's like maybe I should go to the 70s and yeah. hear Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. See, see that guy, see that guy with the afro, David? Yeah. That was me. That was you. <laughs> oh my that god. Was him. That's right. I, I can picture that. I can imagine that. Yeah, I had, I had the Jew pro oh, like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> what happened? What? I was going to say that. I was going to say that, but, you know, I'm like, okay, please, Steve, just you say it. You say it. <laughs> Put the needle David, on the record. <laughs> David, why would I let you go down the road to ruin when I could do it myself? Oh, yeah. well, I was just going to call you after. I'm like, hey, man, is this what you wanted to say? Oh, uh, this is. <laughs> you know, Seth Rogen always likes to make references to that. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. All the time. Yeah. You know. I have to cut my hair back so I don't have my puffy fro. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. A lot Mark, of people. Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg would have that if he didn't cut his hair so short. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but he gonna, wouldn't he, have the guts to have the pick in the back of him. If yeah. you have the pick, you're legit. Yes, with a boombox. The, yeah. Uh, no no yeah. boombox. <laughs> you know, uh, Rob, your, your, your boy Mark wants to charge uh, Facebook users uh, 13 euros a month if they don't want the ads. Uh, let's see how that's going to work out. <laughs> hey, hey. Like, and bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, Netflix already wants like an extra four bucks. Struggling. <laughs> Don't tell me that I got to pay an extra 13 euros for Facebook. Yeah. Uh, just not going to happen. Not, not at all. Happen. Not yeah. at all. Just get wow. out the masses are hooked, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I just grabbed this. I don't know if, if you ever heard of this one. So, um, Tableau is a antenna that goes up on your roof, uh, up in your attic. And this is what gives you the free 70 channels of 4K HD local TV stations. Oh, no way. 
<laughs> so this is a uh, new program from a company called Tableau. It's got 50 hours of DVR storage, two TV tuners, gives you all the local stations and football and everything else like that. And then you, so your streaming just changes to that, but it's got the same kind of, you know, set up as any kind of streaming scenario yeah. that's there. So, uh, you know, these kids have it so easy today. Back in our day, we <laughs> had to get the bootleg direct TV guy that had the different cards to come and mess with your mm. box so that yeah. you can get all of the channels. Listen, youngster. I love it when a millennial or yeah. this used to be like on rabbit ears, David. This was rabbit ears. Had the rabbit ears with the tin foil, and you it's had to actually change. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know what? But, but I don't think we missed out on anything. That, that's the thing. Um, I think that's the thing that everyone needs to recognize. You missed, you missed out on your parents going, man. Can you change from channel two to channel four, please? <laughs> that's what you missed Well, out you on. know, th that's why they had you, right? Because yeah, they needed right. a remote control. My grandmother and... had me to change on to Steve Turn the <laughs> channel to Lawrence Welk. Yeah. <laughs> In the bubble. <laughs> oh, my God. So basically, children were the original um, IOT. Yeah. There yeah, you go. See, everything. The original yeah. remote control, for sure. Yeah, yeah, you brought it on yeah. back. Well done, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what we're here for. <laughs> Everything comes back. Yeah, it it's comes RPA, back. man. RPA. At first we were children of the corn, and now we're children of IoT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Of IoT, COVID, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what? But you know, I'm glad you're getting into Fleetwood Mac. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I would recommend, I may have recommended this before too, um, you know, Dave Grohl being the only person keeping rock and roll alive and he's makes lots of documentaries because he's all a big fan of other musicians. One of them uh, is called Sound City, I think. And it's about a recording studio uh, in uh, LA. Uh, yeah, in LA. Um, it's actually in the Valley and um, there. And it's all about rescuing this soundboard. There's only a handful of these Neve analog soundboards, but anyway, to tie it into Fleetwood Mac, you know, they have they all the people who got their start at this studio going back to the early 70s are in this show if they're alive. Wow. And, St and Stevie Nicks, and so in the early days at this Sound City place, uh, Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks were just a, a poor couple, she was cleaning houses to make ends meet. I forgot what yeah. he was doing. And they were trying to record. They did a couple of albums themselves. And then Mick Fleetwood just happened to be in town and was there and whatever. And he her, overheard them doing stuff. And it was like, what are these people doing? Whatever. They literally got together at Sounds City's studio there um, and in San Fernando Valley. And that is how we got Fleetwood Mac that we know it is today. Because before that, you didn't have the two of those folks, you know. Yeah. You Christine McVie, you know, so anyway, I, I love the history of music. Yeah, it's, awesome. it's amazing. And, you know, I was at the Village Studios in um, in L.A., and that's where they recorded all those albums. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, if the walls could talk, yeah, right. you know, yeah. Rolling Stones, uh, you know, you actually, if you think about it, you don't want the the walls in those clubs on Sunset Boulevard. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> oh, you yeah, do. you do. I, <laughs> you couldn't get yeah. me to sit down at a table there, not at the booth. <laughs> See, that's a big business case for IoT. We can sense all that stuff and no, <laughs> right. record it, and you, then like buy to Nvidia so GPUs to <laughs> store and process it with NLP or LLMs, you know, and get yeah, recorded. <laughs> <you, laughs> <look at, yeah. laughs> Okay. Now what he's now what is he pulling out? Oh, oh Springsteen. <laughs> Springsteen. <laughs> I think this is one of I think this might be one of my favorite album covers ever. Yeah, I, so, I know it's just I know it's just a photo, but I think there's just something about it. You know, so he just did he took uh, a picture of him looking like that because he yeah. just turned seventy or something like that. Okay. Really? There's a picture of him today with his arm around that picture. I love it. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Hey, man. 
Is that Wait, um this is what is music's that? all about, man. This is yeah. album, double album opening it up, having the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah, I might, I remember I might, how I great that was? That feeling. That yeah. having the having the backstory telling you what we were thinking about when we were writing these songs in the studio. Talk, yep. You know what I mean? It's awesome. Yeah. yeah, but you know, that that's the thing. Uh, there was this wonder and magic about imagining versus knowing. You know what I'm saying? We And then discovering. Now we know everything. <laughs> All you have to do is Google it. And uh, I, I think we're just now jaded. You know, we're just accustomed to having data at the tip of our fingers and there's there's no mystery anymore you know yeah. i don't know i think um anyways what the hell are we going to talk about yeah, and that's the other, yeah well i wanted to do a, a a recap of last week um i know oh of, yeah i saw you and you you acted like you didn't even freaking know who i am oh he oh. doesn't even remember. Shots fired. Shots he, fired. He, he just thought I was some other Asian dude. Oh my god! We all look alike. Is that what you're saying? Oh my god! He thought you were one of the singers. What are you, the when did Far I see East you? I saw oh, you. I saw you. My god! <laughs> you I have to be kidding the, me, dude. I saw you in the Beeson uh, thing. I saw That's, that. Okay, the only pass I'm going to give you. Uh oh. Steve, is that you won that that freaking basketball championship and you're old? Okay, that's the only pass I'm going to give you. I came up to you. I said, "Hey, Steve." Then you looked at me like, "No wonder you didn't recognize me. You just thought I I was like another wait, one." Wait, wait, wait. Where, where was this? All the time. <laughs> where was this? Mobile World Congress, dude. You no, were where? Plaza. It was in in the the main exhibit hall, the cafeteria. <laughs> you know the bi business. Business center, <laughs> the cafeteria, <laughs> in, the, in the food court. Yeah, in the food court. I, don't know, I had twenty-one meetings. In yeah, whatever. You know what? That is you the latest no place excuse, for meeting. You, I'm giving you a. Pack. But I did. I did go to your session. By the way, I was in oh. the back of the room for the Beeson session. Well, yeah, you should have been at the front of the room heckling me. You're, you know, you're no, you get no, you're a big man. I, I can't do that. You were That's at. So you were actually was, there. I, you did great. I was, I was a, a well done. It was awesome. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, we got some good feedback and I think I, um, I don't think I made too many people feel, well, some people no. comfortable, but no, I mean, I mean, no, I mean, I, I think everybody that was in that room who took the time to go to it, learned something out of it. It was, it yeah. was well done. I mean, Al, I love Alex. I think he's one of the good guys. Alex, he's a smart, a, yeah, yeah he, he's a smart dude. I saw him the following day and I, you know, gave him praise. I thought, I thought the session was the, all day, all the four hours were great. Um, I was really impressed with the, you, the, but when you walked up to the front of the room and you sat down, the guy from the city of Las Vegas CIO was talking, yeah. man, I didn't realize how well connected that city was. Yeah, yeah. And and just for context, so th we're talking about MWC in Las Vegas 2023, which is this year. And the session that he's talking about or the summit is the private 5G summit that was um that that was put on by Alex Besson and the Besson group and they they focus on a lot of private wireless technologies he has all these like tools that he's developed which are actually really cool, cool. absolutely yeah they're very good and he's doing pretty well which I'm I'm very happy for him because he's been working really hard on this stuff right uh and you know you had uh Intel there T-Mobile uh, uh Ocean um, like what you're saying, um, oh, John Deere was there. So wow. Rob's That's favorite company. Yeah. But they were talking about private networks for industrial, you know, their warehouses and factories and stuff. And then um, I, I was really surprised that not a, a lot about what they're doing in farm fields. That, that he, you know, yeah, but he's with IT. He's with right. IT. And um, there's another group that does all the funky yeah, stuff. That, I mean, because yeah. we all saw that at CES last year, and we and actually we had one of the coffee talks. We were talking about what they were doing and you know the five G stuff on the fields. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, I was I was that was a great day, and I'm just amazed at how many people are deploying private five G, and with the higher prices of you know products and the integration of products i was really surprised 
Yeah, I mean, I got a different feel. Um, I, I think there's a lot of POCs. When I had dinner with um, uh, Jason uh, Willem, I think that's his name. Oh, my God. It's horrible that I... Anyway, met so many people, it's just... I have no excuse either. Anyway, um, you know, they're doing a lot of initial pilots, right? Coming out of a POC. But the use cases like the one that David always talks about, which is coverage. And I think they're pushing sort of the envelope of ROI, meaning um, they're taking more of the investment than they're, they're probably seeing returns. And it's going to be a journey for them, right? And so I, I got to get the sort of the, I got the details from him because, you know, during dinner, you get to ask a lot more questions than you ever do on stage or you ever hear on stage. But that's what I'm seeing. So it, it's like a lot of uh, other um, technologies that are emerging. You're going through a POC phase and people are just learning. Um, and so, um, I mean, is private 5G going to happen? Yes. But man, uh, what is it that I said up on stage? Uh, I think I said it, it smells like, or no. Teen spirit. A lot like IoT. <laughs> it smells like teen spirit. Actually, it's a good idea. We should have played that instead. But yeah. um, I would have probably fared a hell of a lot better. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, it, 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 you know, private 5G is a lot like IoT. You know, and it was well, I mean, I think, I think oh. what I was hoping that someone would have brought up. Whoa. Uh, I had meetings with many of the <laughs> other module manufacturers, and yeah. it's still a very high price to pay for modules. And, right, 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 and and no one really talked about that. I mean, you know, you can have five G on the manufacturing line, Mister John Deere. But aren't your average costs so significantly higher to do the same kind of functionality that you're doing on, say, Wi-Fi 6? Exactly. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's it. They're pushing the I and they're trying to figure out what's the return. So they'll put these things out there. They're doing the invest in these modules and and connecting uh, devices and thingies. Uh, uh, on a 5G network, but you know, some of the applications are pretty basic, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, there are rinse and repeat applications. Yeah. And, and then, you know, the, the networks are expensive, but that's where I think this whole, um, make it as easy as Wi-Fi argument is, I don't think that's going to work, you know, cause make it, it, it as easy to find as a home. Well, that's a way to torpedo your whole project. I wish this was easy as Wi-Fi. Oh, wait, why don't we just use Wi-Fi? That's already, <laughs> already, that's already around us. That's built into every freaking product ever made. Why don't we just yeah. use Wi-Fi? Oh, I hear that new Wi-Fi 7 is going to be 30 gigabit. Good luck, 5G. Exactly. Up to that. Good luck. I went to, a, I went to a session on Wi-Fi 6 that came in, became a BS7 session. And <laughs> you know, I was like, holy crap. Guys, if you want to get nothing done, go down this road. <laughs> yeah. no, and then I, to hear, and no. to hear you say that private five G is a, is like IoT. The first thing that popped in my head is solution in search of a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's is. trying to shoehorn private five G into a place where they already have private wireless networks already. Somehow, I mean, I mean, Rob, I mean. Is do you have enough fingers and toes to come up with use cases that say I have to do the five G throughput and the latency? I nope. mean, exactly. Nope. I Can't. mean, I understand video. I understand Mac. I understand CBRS for Mac. Yeah. Well, the thing is, and you're right about that, Leonard. Because how many people in the stadium have band forty eight in their phone? Yeah, and and you need to we need to be careful about mech as well. I mean, opera mech in the operators network um, has to be worked out in its own way. Do you know what mech rhymes with? No traction. <laughs> Wreck. <laughs> He's a horrible rhymer. I mean, and the word was right there. Wreck. <laughs> I'm, get, I'm getting Rack less. Without a w, w silent. <laughs> 
I get, I'm getting, I'm starting my lessons this week with Dr. Dre. Hopefully I'll get better. But, you know, as far as, as far as getting my rhymes down, but yes, that's what Mac rhymes with. No traction, no lots traction. of talk, no traction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, um, so David, you need to say something cause you're way too damn quiet. I mean, seriously. He's looking well, at this train is, wreck. Like, I don't want to, well, you know, Leonard, you might have to poo poo too many things at people. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, as you, I think you were very coy in saying, you know, these things are getting deployed and this application and, you know, no ROI. And I'm like, dude, are you just saying that these deployments are being subsidized? Let's call them for what they are, right? I subsidize a deployment in order to drive out that, that, that's okay. But, you know, that's, that's out there. Uh, so I was thinking about saying that in a nice way, like it just came out. Uh, <laughs> And, you know, Rob, the whole, I, I really laughed at the as easy as Wi-Fi. And I almost, I almost want to defend a part of it because I think it's, it's mm-hmm. from a management perspective, like apples to yeah. apples. Like I have, I deploy Wi-Fi, I deploy private, like it's deployed. If we go back to how do I manage it? No, no, it's, they're, they're quite easy and comparable. Um, but yeah, but what would be easier if I already have Wi-Fi than to just upgrade my Wi-Fi, if we're going to stick to EC. Um, and look, if we want to pigeonhole use cases, um, and you know, and I know that I'm, I'm in a different horse now, but dude, it's about access. It's access. It's access. It's access. Does the end customer really, really care about how yeah. they get that access? And if they do, hey, man, yay, all right, awesome. But yeah. it's access. I will forever be happy that with private wireless there's an additional option and if and if it makes sense for the you know customers are really smart if they like that option they can deploy it Mm -hmm. um i love that it's mature because we've been doing private networks for a long 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 time so you're messing around uh you have you know when steve mentioned vegas being lit up you know the guys from uh, Vapor IO. These guys are popping up data centers where no one else wanted to put data centers, and now they're taking all that traffic from big carriers that they don't want to deploy their Mac. You know, like the part, the parts are there. But you know, I'm just going back to access and options, and uh, you know, lo- long live private five G. But that that's a good point, though. So one of the points I made up on stage was um, it needs to find a home uh, and figure out where it fits in the community of a lot of contending options, right? And then there's a lot of complexity. You have the unlicensed, shared, licensed models, or, or you know, models that go off of those varieties of uh, spectrum regimes, and. Uh, you know, it's very complicated. And and that's why I go back to the my statement about IoT is that th- there's so much diversity of scenarios and, um, you know, th- uh, solutions. Uh, it's just like IoT. And, and so uh, can you scale? It's going to be a private, challenge. I think, private 5G, vendors. I think private 5G found a home at the food court at the Las Vegas Convention Center. <laughs> yeah. That's and a you, great use case. Right? And you know where I, you know where IoT found its home at where? the Hyatt Regency Bar next to the Santa Clara Convention Center. <laughs> <laughs> millions and millions and millions of dollars of deals in that lobby, baby. Yeah. <laughs> All day for a long, long time too. Yeah. There you go. There no. you go. You know, you know that IoT Leonard, I did go out into the hallway uh, to the CIO of Las Vegas, and I said, here you got this F1 race coming to town. And I was talking to some of the F1 IT people because I was a bidder on the IoT sp- space for that with a com- with a SI. Do you know that he refuses to allow Formula One to utilize his private 5G network in town? No, Ooh. I didn't know that. So wow. that one's cool. having to put up their own network to do it. Good for them. I mean, they should. I mean, but they probably I, always have, it. right? I mean, everything yeah, we want to learn mean, about the bleeding edge of IoT, you learn from Formula One, actually. Right. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Correct. These guys were doing this stuff way before we were, and they're doing it at the most bleeding edge, like we can't even imagine. Correct. Well, I'm going. I'm going to leave with the following two things. Number yep. one. 
telemetry, folks, telemetry, Formula One. And, uh, and you know, it will be, I am eager to hear from, so in this case, Steve, if, uh, if you have a private network by the city and a private network by, in this case, Formula One, I really want to hear like the real world implications outside of reading a paper of what happens in the middle with those devices. Like from, just, an, interference, like, from an interference standpoint? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, does it really make a difference? Does it just, what, what happens outside of a lab, outside of a paper? What was the experience? I would I would love to know. Um, I don't know. That, I don't I don't know that it's it's talked about enough. Even though you today they are neighbors. If we think of factories and farms, it's going to happen. You're growing pineapples. I'm growing whatever. We're neighbors. What what happens in the overlap? Uh, anyway, peace out, All guys. Right. Yeah. Peace out. Cheers. Bye. Good seeing you, man. Yeah. I mean, that is a great point because we, have we really. It took us many years in 3G land to figure out the interference issues that we were having um, in that frequency range. And I don't yeah. know if we're doing enough to, I don't know. I don't know. No, I, I think it's gonna, but that that might be one of the advantages of, of um, private 5G um, because be. it has the, uh, ability and capacity to uh, address a lot of those, uh, uh, you know, beyond what Wi-Fi can provide, especially in a congested environment. Um, I mean, well, but idea. still, you know, compared to wired. So that that's the problem. It compared to wired, you know, um, can you deliver those, um, you know, six nines? Do you know what I'm saying? That's really freaking tough. Because, I mean, think about your smartphone. When you go into a congested area, all of a sudden, your smartphone that behaves awesome in a, uh, let's say, in a mall where not a lot of people are maybe using downloading stuff. I mean, you know, this, and this is the funny thing. You go to a mall that's crowded. You don't have a lot of people watching YouTube videos. <laughs> what they do is you get like all this great down lead load speed. And, you know, um, you know, they're not a lot of utilization. Right. And, um, uh, and, and so, but then when you go into a really congested area like New York, like let's say um, at Times Square in, in New York, all of a sudden your phone is behaving really weird and performing very poorly. And uh, in a commercial environment or even a warehouse where you have all these AGVs and mobile elements in the uh, in the on the floor. Um, is any wireless option um, reliable enough, right? And so from a system design perspective, how are you actually going to engineer that system of systems? You know, you're probably going to put a hell of a lot more intelligence on device so that there's a, you know, sort of a, a semi-autonomous, uh, more of a semi-autonomous capability on it or more autonomous capability on it than you would have otherwise. You know? And then you wonder who's responsible for it. Is it a JMA and Federated and any of those types of organizations that are installing the 5G private stuff? <laughs> or is it the FCC that actually, you know, requires you to have the license and, and go through the right? I mean, that's the other thing too, because when I, I just look at those guys, okay, I'm just putting boxes up. I'm putting antennas up. I'm putting amplifiers up. Yeah, doing really basic, you know, network planning and site surveys and stuff. And it's like, right. you know, some of the more critical stuff that competes with wired and right. for these important con connections, it, it, they're not. And then that's why I go back to, yeah, I, I agree with David. Uh, making some aspects as easy as Wi-Fi is great. But the thing is, is that, uh, the the critical uh, these differentiated functions are, are not easy as Wi-Fi, you know. Um, and you know what? I came up with a solution for the whole thing. But because uh, uh, there's obviously wired is the best, but for things that are moving around like AGVs, that's kind of a problem. So here is the solution. It's like. <laughs> 
like the really long phone cords oh my God. In, like in the seventies, you know, where you stretch the phone all the way yeah, across yeah, the yeah, house. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's the solution <laughs> for AGVs. Long curly Q yeah. phone yeah. cords. <laughs> it's, so it's, it's the Princess IoT yeah. phone cord scenario. Yes, Princess IoT phone cord is the solution. You heard it here, folks. Boom. Yeah. That's happening. Right. Boom. There you That's, go. Go ahead. Go ahead and just send your Venmo me millions. <laughs> go ahead. You were and struggling with oh this for so long. Now you are putting them here. together in my garage. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Just get on I mean, those phone cords from the seventies. <laughs> you know. You know, like when you watch the Brady Bunch and they're on the phone and walking across halfway across the house. That's each AGBs. Boom. No. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm tired. I'm spent. So, Leonard, wow. what, what <laughs> else did you learn last week? What other words of wisdom or things of, of grandeur that you saw last week? Um. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, well, number one, there weren't that many people there. Um, 8,000. So that was it? Wow. Okay, because they were claiming nine, but... Yeah, you know, uh, Rob, it would have definitely not been your uh, worth your while to come out. Um, See now, how many meetings did you have? I had a ton. I, I had a packed day. I was packed all day. Breakfast at Seagulls to dinner somewhere else. I mean, yeah, yeah. literally I mean, two like, three days. Dude, I mean, every day is breakfast at Seagulls for you. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you know, Rob I likes to the- in the morning. <laughs> You know, Rob, honestly, Rob likes to roam around the ex- exhibit hall. and he would have, yeah, yeah, that would not have worked. He would have gotten bored pretty quick. Yeah, so any of my clients that had boots, you know, were complaining about the traffic or lack thereof. Yeah. And I said, have you gone to the food court over there? Yeah. <laughs> and, I said, and, go, and they go, well, yeah. I said, there are thousands of people having meetings yeah thousands of people having meetings from morning noon to night yeah this is a if you are here for business everybody is here yeah I yeah mean, well that's true yeah right? therefore set up your booth in the food in the court. middle of the food court <laughs> yeah i mean you know you saw everybody like i saw steve there and then he didn't recognize me there were so many people you know, so many Asian guys that all look the same. Rob, Rob help me, Rob. <laughs> oh my God. It's to get uglier. Wow. Wow. The FCC, yeah, yeah, you keep the FCC just yourself. took us off the air right there, dude. Yeah, so, so much for it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Not, no, no, thank you, Steve, for showing up for my speech. Thanks, no, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks for that. Um, no, I really appreciate it. But you're right. Yeah, and I jokingly, uh, not too jokingly, actually, I'm a bit semi-serious, is, um, you know, suggesting GSMA and CTIA rent tables and block off maybe half of that area for eat only. Because, you know, it was so hard. If you, uh, if you ordered any food in, in that food court, you couldn't find a place to sit. And there's like people right. s- sitting in these... Um, you know, on, in these tables all day, ever. You know, it's like, you man, if you're not eating, get the friggin' hell out, man. What's what's wrong with you, people? Go get a. Well, book. it's interesting you say that because um, I did say something to someone at GSMA because there was so much excess room on the show floor, uh-huh. and there was no food in the show floor unless you did your own private reception kind of thing like that. You're 100 percent right. I mean, that. I mean, why wouldn't you do that to make more room? Because, I mean, no one was spending ten thousand dollars for a meeting unless you really did it. You know, I mean, it's just like. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, if they, you can only take so many hits like this. I mean, last year was a little bit like that. Um, this year, yeah. everybody really went cheapo. And, uh, and a lot of the folks who bought space. Um, they're they're going, man. We're not going to do this next year, you know. Um, and I heard a lot of folks say that. Well, I mean, it's um, gotten priced out. I mean, it's just it, it's too damn expensive to do a ten by ten. At a, at a right, time. right. But they're gonna. I talked to John Hoffman briefly. You know, I didn't want to bother him too much. Um, and he said that they're going to make a pivot next year toward industrial enterprise, which I think is smart. But the challenge is, how do you get? 
buyers, enterprise level buyers in there. And, um, and, and users. Right. And then does this become, let's say, an SI type of event versus a telco tech event? You know well, what I'm saying? It's, like, it's, it's, it's almost like the fault, right? I mean, it, I mean, if you look at the 8,000, 9,000 people, you know, six or 7,000 of them are wanting to do business with each other because IoT requires a full array of people in order to provide this solution to a customer. Yeah, so, but... Yeah, yeah, but I I think a, a key audiences for that kind of agenda or focus <clears throat> are are missing. I mean, you know, the John Deere guy, you know, John Deere showing up is awesome. It's great. Um, yeah, that, that's the, those are the types of people. So our next year, are we? Well, he's a vendor talking to vendors. No, he's a end end user talking to vendors. No, he is the IT guy for John Deere who sells those, you know, he uses his services for himself, right? Yeah, end user. But he's not He's not necessarily a vendor looking for an end user. Yeah, 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 exactly. But, you know, that's what you want to match. The question is, how do you get more of the John Deere's at the event talking about enterprise and industrial? And then does this become an IoT thing you know like industrial 4.0 are you competing with some of the already you know like uh hanover messy type of thing you know right which might not be a bad bad right. idea you know but then it's so you could just get more. the tiniest fraction of the audience that hanover gets you would be so thrilled <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that would be insane yeah. to have well i'm right. definitely heard, going next year a few minutes yeah, ago i think somebody mentioned the letter ctia do we remember back when they used to have their own events i remember but, going uh, to and and That's this they event. drove yeah. end users to those with a variety of different <laughs> um sessions and events that were driving end users to attend yeah, yeah. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'll be right I think, back. And I think Rob, the other thing too, for you and I, I mean, when you look at some of these events that we go to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to bring back, do you remember this, like the CIO symposiums and uh, some of those types of CIO yeah. magazine used to do those events and stuff. That's yeah. where all the end users were the CEO, CIO, you know, we used to go to the Harvard Club in New York and a couple of other things where end user corporate enterprise guys were at. And we don't have them as much anymore. That's a good point. To get to drive those things, because I'll look at the same thing, in, you know, between Austin and IoT Evolution of Fort Lauderdale and now CTIA GSMA or, or Mobile World Congresses. They're all vendor vendors. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just every wall of us. Kind of talk. now, was it good for people like me and you? Sure, I mean, you know, because we can't do yeah. this on our own. We have to have these partnerships in in place, uh, right? But for our clients, not having end users to sell stuff to, I can understand their frustration. Absolutely, Absolutely. Understand their frustration. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I just don't know what the alternative is. I mean, I mean, right now we're down to you know a handful of IoT shows in the U.S. that right. you and I would want to go to unless it's verticalized, like you said, like I'm going to oil and gas or I'm going to agriculture yep. or I'm going to some kind of vertical market segment show. Right, right. Yeah, right? well, they're still doing their thing that you always go to in Fort Lauderdale. Is that right? Yeah, IoT Evolution is still on for February. Um, yeah, that's, that was pretty big, big, right? No? Yeah, I mean it's it's I mean I'm not sure it's eight thousand people, but I mean it's it's big. But again, it's going back to it's a vendor focused event. It's not necessarily no. you know an end user. I mean I, I'm gonna you know Leonard, you brought up a great point. Uh, you know when you look at the higher Regency in Santa Clara, I mean how many deals were made in that lobby over a ten year period of time at IoT World that you know Rob and I complained about from two weeks ago. Um, with end users being there with vendors, yeah. Yeah. you know, and now that, that shit doesn't happen. And right. So, yeah. You know, I, I don't know how to get around it. I don't, I don't know how you drive end users to Las Vegas, to the West hall. 
I just yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's going to be the huge trick, right? That'll be the huge. Yeah. Trick. yeah. So good luck to uh, John and yeah, SMA and CTIA. But um, yeah, you know, I think uh, uh, outside of T-Mobile, I mean, those guys are like probably the most non-modest group of. Oh folks. yeah. <laughs> the, they, they the oh my serious god! Money, man. They're like, right. hey, we're kicking everyone's butt. Party! Uh, right. <laughs> I like we're my we're the best. <laughs> we're the best. You know, speaking of events, you remember we had that guy uh, Steve Cannon on? Yeah, He's, yeah. He and I spent some time. Obviously, we dropped the ball. We we were going to have a conference in Bozeman, Montana, in August. <laughs> like an IoT developer kind of conference in Bozeman. That, that we toss that around. Is it and we're fly fishing. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I'm I'm there for I I because I need some more gefilte fish. That's there you go. <laughs> fly fish for gefilte fish. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I wish we hadn't dropped the ball on that. That could have been kind of fun, actually. Well, I, and again, you know. Uh, uh, yes, I do think that we do need to have some more developer conferences in our space. I mean, there is so much going on from platforms to, you know, services being provided and developers and things. I mean, I, I'll give you an example. You know, I'm, you know, you guys know I'm doing this thing with scripts on ATSE 3.0, and I'm looking for application developers and systems integrators in Indianapolis, Detroit. Kansas City and Denver Boulder that have IoT mobile experience. And if anybody is out there listening to us in IoT Coffee Talk land, reach out to me because I'm looking for guys in those local markets to do testing and, and mobile app development on the IoT side for this. And it's hard to find them. Yeah. Like where do where do you and I, where do we go to find an application developer in IoT land in Detroit? Yeah. Hey, Mark. Eight yeah. mile <laughs> in a in a trailer park. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's kind of brutalish, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you we you know, I don't know how you. I'm I'm trying. I don't know how to go out and find mm -hmm. them. All. Who's the qualified guys? I went to the women in tech groups. I went to the software developer groups. I went to you know, I reached out to you know AWS IoT and Azure IoT and. Give me, you know, who's got, who do you, who's developing in those cities? And they don't, they, they have no way of breaking down the database. Like, yeah, um, interesting. Or, wow. or they just don't want to share the numbers with you because. But it would help them. It will be on their platform. It would be more, more, more data consumption. Yeah. If, yeah. if there's demand, but I, I think I, the biggest challenge I, I, is generally awareness. And if you can't get, you can't get end users, and I don't mean just developers, end users understanding why they need to care about what this developer is yapping about, and then, uh, you know, understand or even consider um, the investment into, let's say, a cellular network of any kind. Uh, ball doesn't move, right? But then, see, that's, you know, I, I think the developer is a, a convenient audience to approach um but if those end you know the the business stakeholders don't see that their developers are actually tuning into anything that's highly valuable to pay for the network investment just, nothing's really going to happen and then of course the trick is how do you filter out all the BS that you have to float to, you know, the chum that you have to throw into the water to even draw end users to come to a, a you know, a vendor, what's well, right now heavily a vendor, vendor developer conference. Because right. um, like we've been saying this whole time with IoT, the problem with it is it's like, what problem are you trying to solve? You know, Bill always says that. What problem are you trying to solve? That's a business problem. It's not the technical problem that pays the bill, right? And right. and, and right. that is the challenge. And maybe that's why all of these guys should have us 
on their council. <laughs> hint, hint. Yeah, you know, maybe we, we can help we, you figure it out. Because you bring up a great it. point. I mean, I, I, I always say that um, today has never been a better day to be <laughs> in the IoT space because you can find anything and everything to solve a problem. The problem yeah. is that how do you do that? Like, what's the next <laughs> step? Like, you know, like how do you do that? that? You know, because I, I mean, I can, you know, you can like, you know, Rob, you know, we, we have the sensors, we have the software, we have the platforms, we have the network, we have the security aspects are covered. We have the implementation, we have the network options. You got all that shit together. Boom, put it all together. We can solve customers' problems. Right, right. Yeah. Where's right. the awareness? Where's the awareness? That How do we get, you know, that out? Yeah. So. And, and, and the connectivity, I mean, it, uh, Connectivity is not the full equation. Part no. of, I mean, that's not the full equation. It's just maybe one variable. Right. Yeah, because Steve already solved the connectivity thing years ago with helium. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sidewalk. <laughs> so, so that's sidewalk's awesome. coming. Don't you talk about sidewalk like that? Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, I, I again the other day. I, I just went to the sidewalk coverage map. I'm just I just look at it and just laugh because it's freaking everywhere. <laughs> it's, ev it's everywhere. Like oh my god, it's like wow. You know, it's uh, yeah, yeah. In the United States, right? Yeah, and then I, and then I went and I uh, so yes, I'm going to bring up helium, but. There are so many people, as we know, that, that are taking their helium miners off the air, right? Off, and it's and we talked about this before. So I had this crazy harebrained, you know, entrepreneurial idea that you know never comes out of me, but ever. Um, how can we convert those helium miners to LoRaWAN miners? Like, how can we put put them on LoRaWAN? And the guys from Rack Wireless said it's almost impossible if you have to change firmware and all kinds of yeah. other things within the Rack Miner. And, and it's just not something that you can do over the air from Laura Wan land to do it. And you go, oh, my God, you know, it's like, Sounds, yeah, how do you, how do you like screw up a whole freaking market, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know what? <clears throat> we called it. We did. Oh, no, no doubt about it. I, I like a lot of other stuff, that's not the only thing we've called on that oh, I, show, you know, <laughs> which is like freaking ridiculous. That's why, you know, it always sounds like we're talking about the same shit every week, but it, we're not like this episode. We've kind of talked about this before, but we haven't. You know what I'm saying? It's you like, know, Leonard's kind of sounded like one of those guys who they have on CNBC. Yeah, I called the 2008 market crash. I called it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, no, but you, we we did, you know, and we went against the grain uh, uh, on a lot of the thinking, and yeah. uh, you know, and we we for, we forced people to ask some really tough questions and get really uh, uncomfortable with what they were hearing. Yeah, they were exactly. starting to believe. Um, but then that yeah. says something about us, right? I mean, come on, we got to give ourselves some freaking credit, you know? I think so, don't you? No, we have to go to that place, that internet store where you get your check for being yeah. popular on the internet and saying good things. Yeah. Remember that? That was on a, a million years ago on South Park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where well, all the people, all the people who are YouTube famous and the little baby yeah. <laughs> and all the stuff, and they're like, I'm here to get my check for being famous on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's a thankless, a thankless job, right? It is. It is. Yeah, but hey, know. go ahead. Here's the barcode for Venmo us, people. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> hey, Patreon us. Yeah. You know, there you go. Yeah. We're out there holding out our cup on the sidewalk. Well, you know, but you know what? what there's a great business in being wrong. So uh, maybe we need to start doing that and hyping up every everything that every we're wrong thing. <laughs> Oh yeah, being wrong. I mean, uh, it looks like it's a great business. I mean, look at look at some of these guys that were saying that crypto is going to be like, uh, you know, a quarter million, a quarter million by like three years ago. <laughs> yeah. Those guys are still on CNBC and talking and you know, um, shilling the next nonsense. You know, hey, I mean, that's a great Leonard, business. Leonard, ancient. Yeah, I mean, come on, Bitcoin's up a lot this year. Like what? Forty-seven percent. This year. guy, this yeah. guy. Well, you know, um, uh, Nvidia is up X, Y, Z. 
All right, but it's not, it's not at 200 and it's not at a quarter million. All right, here's a call. Here's a call we can make that's an easy one about bad, bad news, bad things happening. Oh, if you're a Delta Sky Miles frequent flyer, you want to talk about people putting it on their head and committing suicide. Delta is killing itself right now by destroying their Sky Miles program. Well, that you know, and then Ed Bastion coming out last week going, "We hear you. We need to make changes." You know, blah 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 blah. blah. They did it to themselves, Rob, by yep. doing the rollover from COVID years and doing the rollover, which increased the amount of diamonds and platinum yes. so yeah. high that they selected the Sky Club. So they did it to themselves. But yeah. if you're going to screw the people like me that have 2.3 million miles. I'm sorry. I'm going to make a decision. I I, I I don't need my American Express card to do, you know, to do that. They're making it so hard now. The new rules are insane. Yeah. I have so many friends. I see them on Facebook. They're like, yeah, I'm yeah. getting rid of my my Delta American Express. I'm not yeah. automatically a loyal customer anymore. Well, and then you got guys like Jeff Blue and other ones that are saying there, I'll take your status and you can have that status on my on my my airline. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So yeah. it, there you go, folks. You didn't think you're going to hear about us blasting Delta Sky Mile program, but they deserve it. <laughs> and they did it to themselves. This is they a self inflicted wound. They yeah. did. They did. Yeah. They absolutely did it to themselves. I mean, it's just yeah. like. So next time you see Steve flying, he'll be like on Frontier or Spirit Airlines where, you know, hey, would you like to pay for a glass of water? <laughs> No, I love that. What's that commercial? The AT and T commercial. Yeah, really awesome. going, it's twenty three dollars for water. <laughs> <laughs> that is totally oh. spirit. That's like you Ryan wanna, Air. You want to hold yeah. it in, or do you want to pay sixteen dollars for the lube in the bag? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I thought I was saving money by doing a carry on. Oh, I know. Sorry. If so you I, want space above your, well, yeah. I have my I have my empty <laughs> bottle of Gatorade for a reason, yeah. please. So, I mean, <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's pretty, absolutely. Ridiculous. And it ends up being just as expensive as anything else. <laughs> well, it does. It does. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, it's it is ridiculous. <laughs> and I don't know how it gets changed, Rob. They're going to have to They're. It's what a publicity nightmare. It is a publicity nightmare. And everyone's talking about it. All the loyal customers are being very vocal all over the Internet and all over social right. media right now. And so they got to be getting a right. mouthful. I yeah, know people have been posting the profile picture of the guy who's in charge of this program now right. and the spreading it around the internet. It's like this guy. <laughs> right. right. Well, I mean, it's the other thing too, that I heard from my Atlanta Delta people. So they had made billions and billions of profit dollars off American express because remember they have no MasterCard visa program. Yeah. And so, th so that guy he talked to all the Delta, he t the American Express and that guy got talked and they said, I need more billions. So <sighs> let's make a program. Wow. I'm sorry. You ain't going to get me to spend $35,000 on my American Express card. It ain't going to happen. No. All right. Well, hey, guys, I got to drop. Yeah. So let's call so, it We're almost at an hour. Um, ElevateOurKids.org. Great program this year for the fundraising. It's $300 per Chromebook. Donate. Get it in there. It's, you're doing a great job. We, you know, we're, we're reposting it all. If you don't see it, I'd be shocked between all of us with the 27 million followers that the three of us have. Um, <laughs> and on, on top of Stephanie. So, um, do, that's a great cause right now going on. It's a campaign fundraising right now. So let's go. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, remember, subscribe, like, and share, and comment at www.iotcoffeetalk.com. And we will see you next week. Take care, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye.